Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this WADA webinar on the Technical Document for Sports Specific Analysis, or the TDSSA as it's commonly known. This is our second webinar topic, and today marks a special session for NADOs and RADOs as part of our series of webinars in the, in the lead up to the introduction of the revised code. First of all, a few introductions. My name is Ben Nichols. I'm the Senior Media Relations and Communications Manager for WADA and the moderator for today's session. I'm delighted to introduce our presenter for today, Tim Ricketts. Tim is the Director for Standards and Harmonization at WADA. And alongside Tim, we have Stuart Kemp, the Deputy Director for Standards and Harmonization. And coming to us from overseas, we have two external participants, Dr. Matt Federuk, who is coming to us from the US Anti-Doping Agency, and Runa Anderson, from Anti-Doping Norway, so thank you to Matt and to Runa for joining us as well. All of our experts will be available for questions following Tim's presentation, so we invite you to type these in over the next 30 minutes or so, and we'll get through as many as we can. And just a final word, we are trending on Twitter this morning. You can follow us using the hashtag WADAWebinar, and we'll tweet some of the main highlights from Tim's presentation. So without further ado, I will hand over to Tim to take us through the technical document. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, man. Uh, ben, and uh, hello to everyone from Montreal. Thank you for joining this webinar on the new technical document for sports-specific analysis. During this presentation, I will refer to the technical document for sports-specific analysis as the TD, and I'll also refer to the minimum levels of analysis as MLAs. The technical document is referenced in Article 5.4 of the 2015 Code and is therefore a mandatory Level 2 document for all ADOs, so IFs, NARDOs, RADOs and major event organisers to adopt and apply to their testing programs from 1 January 2015. The concept of the technical document came about following the inconsistent application of testing for certain prohibited substances which are not part of the standard urine analysis menu. Currently the application of these analyses are at the discretion of ADOs and are not being closely monitored nor are there any consequences if they are not being analysed at all. This has resulted in a clear imbalance in the testing of athletes within the same sport around the world where these substances are at risk of abuse. And I'm sure many of us will have heard the voice of the athlete saying, why am I being tested for all these extra substances when I know my competitors and other countries are not? Well, the technical document is a tool to now address this by providing minimum levels of analysis or MLAs that are to be applied by all ADOs who test those sports and disciplines at risk to those prohibited substances within the scope of the technical document. The technical document will achieve the following. It will close the current loopholes in analysis by setting minimum levels of analysis. It will increase the level of deterrence and we hope as well we'll see an increase in the levels of detection. It will hold ADOs more accountable and increase the quality of programs. It will also increase the capacity and proficiency of our WADA accredited laboratories and overall provide greater protection to the clean athletes. The technical document will result for many ADOs in a significant change to the way they implement their testing programs. Not only do ADOs have a new technical document, but also there is a new code and international standards to implement. And this has led to a need to reassess internal resources and programs and to rethink how testing programs can be more intelligence and data driven with a view to being more target specific. On this basis, 2015 will be a year of implementation and review rather than direct measuring of compliance to the technical document. This will also provide WADA and the technical document expert group with the opportunity to review the implementation and to consider if any adjustments to the technical document are required for 2016. Adams will be key in the monitoring of the level of implementation and our annual testing figures report will continue to contain the level of analysis by testing authority 
by substance and sport and discipline. On this basis, WADA urges all ADOs to attempt to meet the full MLA percentages so that the best possible evaluation can be undertaken by not only WADA but also the individual ADOs in preparation for 2016. WADA welcomes comments from ADOs at any time, so please provide your feedback to tdssa at wada-ama.org at any time. We'd be interested to hear from you. The development of the technical document was primarily based on physiological and non-physiological demands in conjunction with the international federations. And this uh, resulted in sports being classified into similar physiological categories to create a, a level of consistency. And this was a similar approach as was applied in the Drenge study of anti-doping Norway on this topic. The expert group also looked at the performance benefit of the substances, so ranking how effective these prohibited substances were in actually increasing performance, and also the existing laboratory capacity to analyse these prohibited substances globally was also looked at. Now an important point for ADOs to note is that the physiological risk assessment process that was undertaken is not the full risk assessment that ADOs are required to complete as outlined in the ISTI and the new guideline on implementing effective testing programs. Those of you who attended our first webinar last month will be aware of the various components that are involved in such risk assessment and the importance that each ADO conduct a thorough risk assessment to ensure they develop a robust and comprehensive TDP. The technical document is one part of this overall process. The consultation process undertaken with the various stakeholders was certainly critical in the development of the technical document. The higher number of comments received from the IFs reflects their heavy involvement at the start of the process which related to the physiological risk assessment of over 100 sports that are signatories to the code. The feedback and submissions received from NARDOs focused on a number of implementation aspects and this was particularly important given the impact the technical document will have on the large portfolio of sports that NARDOs have jurisdiction over and that have to apply the technical document to. Laboratories were also consulted. This document will have on their operations. So the end product is that we have six sections of the technical document. The first three are the main body and appendix one and two, the MLAs by sport and discipline tables. The other three sections are supporting documents that can be updated by WADA at any time and are provided to assist ADOs uh, in the implementation of the technical document. These are all available on the website and the French and Spanish versions of the technical document will be published in the coming week. In terms of the prohibited substances that are on the technical document, there's three categories. The first is the erythropoiesis stimulating agents or ESAs and this is really the new term for EPO which the laboratories uh, are using which includes EPO and all its various analogues such as sera. So when you request an ESA analysis to a laboratory, you will now automatically receive, receive EPO plus all the other detectable analogues of EPO including sera in either urine or blood. Growth hormone and growth hormone releasing factors are the other two categories of substances. And further information on these is included in supporting document B of the technical document. At this point, all WADA accredited laboratories can test for ESAs and growth hormone. There are some current laboratory limitations for growth hormone releasing factors, which is why they have been grouped with growth hormone, but this will be enhanced during 2015 details of which laboratories offer which services will be touched on later. So what about the other substances on the prohibited list? Well, the substances analysed in a routine urine sample for in competition or out of competition are not part of this technical document. Where a sport is determined to have a very minimal risk to those substances within the scope of the technical document, they have a 0% MLA. However, any ADO may wish at any time to test a sport or discipline that has an MLA of zero. The prohibited substances on the technical document are obviously still prohibited to all sports. 
So what is the minimum level of analysis outside of the technical document? So when you are not doing a technical document related test. Well, this is the current routine urine analysis that labs perform in an in and out of competitions sample. There's no ability to re reduce this any further. Growth hormone, well this substance and the analytical methods have been in the spotlight over the past 18 months following an appeal to CAS uh, by an athlete challenging that the growth hormone test had the potential to report false positives. As a result, the growth hormone analysis methods were suspended at all labs in March 2013. And a full review of the analytical method was undertaken by an independent expert group. In June 2014, the growth hormone isoforms method was given the green light for WADA labs to begin analysing again. And there are actually two methods for growth hormone. The first is the isoforms test, which as I mentioned is available in all labs. It has a relatively short detection window of around 24 to 48 hours post use. The second is the biomarkers growth hormone test, which is currently not available in labs due to the revalidation of some of the equipment that's used in the analysis process. WADA is in the final stages of finalising the testing and revalidation of this new equipment used in the analysis and this is due to occur sometime in 2015. The biomarker's strength is its longer detection window than the isoforms method. However, it may not detect growth hormone in the early phases, which is why it is best to use both the isoforms and the biomarker's methods together when the biomarkers method is, is back available again. And of course detection windows are subject to a number of factors such as the route of administration, the dosage rate and even gender. So there is no exact window for these prohibited substances due to these variances. But this can be provided as a guide and should be kept in mind. The breakdown of these sports and disciplines in their MLAs reflect the different physiological risks to the prohibited substances within the scope of the technical document. As an example, the athletics, track and road disciplines vary in their percentage of analysis based on the different physiological aspects of power to strength through to endurance from the sprint to long distance disciplines. The, obviously the risk of ESAs increases as the distance increases to reflect the greater requirement of the aerobic energy systems and the benefits that ESAs can provide. Some however may find that the 10% ESAs for athletic sprint is unusual. However we need to think of the preparation phases in a sport as well as the competition and we do know from prior doping cases and the performance enhancing effects of ESAs that this substance can assist in the ability to conduct a high volume of workload during training phases. Appendix 1 of the technical document alone contains 173 sports and disciplines and those sports that may not be listed may not be signatories to the code and are therefore not mandated to have a minimum level of analysis. However, ADOs are free to apply such analyses to these sports and disciplines at their own will within their countries. The technical document should be applied to international and national level athletes as defined by each IF and NATO within their rules. However, technical document analyses applied outside of this definition will not be calculated towards an ADO's efforts in meeting the MLAs. But of course, if the risk does exist and the program of the ADOs includes these athletes, then they should be conducted. The ISTI and more so the new guideline on implementing effective testing programs covers the steps in conducting a risk assessment which ultimately leads to the number of tests that are to be applied to each sport and discipline that an ADO wishes to conduct. The MLA percentage of the technical document is then applied to the number of tests for each sport and discipline to determine the minimum number of analyses to be performed for the prohibited substances. The next step is then the implementation phase, ensuring that the technical document tests are applied based on reason. And by this I mean utilising as much information as possible to support the application and timing of the tests 
to those athletes at risk. There may be some circumstances where the calculation results in less than one test. This may be due to a small number of tests being planned for a sport or discipline and or a low MLA percentage. In such circumstances, and the figure should be rounded up to one as the minimum number of analyses to be provided. Of course, meeting the MLAs is only one part of the technical document. The second part, and possibly more crucial, is ensuring that those tests are applied to athletes at risk at the right times and for the right substances. This requires the use of supporting information such as ABP data, tip-off, suspicious whereabouts such as athletes training in unusual countries, injuries and other identified risk factors. And ADOs are provided with the flexibility of who, where and when to apply the technical document tests. The feedback we receive from ADOs during the consultation process is that they would like to have greater guidance around the timing of these tests to ensure that they can focus their resources in a more strategic way. Further information and education about the substances and their detect detection windows would also be of benefit. And on this basis, WADA and the Technical Document Expert Group are currently formulating a document on this which we hope to make available before the end of this year or early in 2015. Of course, such a guidance document will not replace the key role that the APMUs play in targeting the ESAs or other blood boosting substances. As a guide, uh, the breakdown of out of competition to in competition should be driven by your risk assessment and risk factors. However, the experts that are looking into these substances are suggesting that a 60 to 70 percent for ESAs and 70 to 80 percent of growth hormone tests should be applied in an out of competition environment. In terms of counting the number of tests, when we looked into how ADOs counted their testing figures, we found a number of ways this was being represented. As an example, some ADOs count a urine, a blood, an ABP sample as three tests. Others counted that as one. Others included dilute samples and even the number of ESA and growth hormone analyses as individual tests as well. To enable a consistent approach for the calculations of the technical document, the baseline figure to determine the number of analyses will be the number of tests planned to be conducted. One test is considered as one sample collection session for one athlete and this is regardless of how many samples may be collected from that athlete during an individual sample collection session. As an example, if an ADO collects say a blood and urine sample from four athletes during the same sample collection session, then this equates to four tests. ADOs are of course not restricted from reporting the number of samples collected nor the number of types of analyses conducted, but the measurement for the technical document will be the number of tests or individual sample collection sessions conducted. This will also be a true reflection to the number of athletes tested and could also outline the number of times the same athlete is tested as part of an ADO's program. In counting the number of analyses, uh, this is just as important as the way you apply the MLA percentage to the number of tests. If you conduct an ESA analysis in either urine or blood or both during the same sample collection session, this will be counted as one analysis towards the MLA of that sport or discipline. If you conduct a growth hormone isoforms method or the growth hormone biomarkers method or both during the same sample collection session, it is counted as one analysis towards the MLA of that sport or discipline. If you conduct growth hormone releasing factor analysis, it is counted as one analysis towards the growth hormone and growth hormone releasing factors. The majority of your analysis for this group of substances, in particular growth hormone, growth hormone releasing factors is what I'm referring to, should be for growth hormone on the basis that growth hormone can be analysed for in all of the laboratories. In circumstances where the International Federation may contract an ARDO to collect samples on the IF's behalf, the International Federation would be the testing authority or the TA and any technical document test conducted under such contract 
would be credited to the IS MLAs as the TA. The athlete biological passport, uh, the hematological module, is not mandated within the technical document for 2015. The technical document expert group agreed that a strong recommendation to all sports and disciplines that have an MLA of 15% or above for ESA should have an ABP blood program in place. Those ADOs who already are implementing an APP blood program are able to apply for a reduction in the MLA for ESAs of up to 50%, subject to the criteria listed in the technical document being fulfilled. I must say this is not an automatic reduction. The criteria needs to be met, including that the existing ABP program is being implemented effectively and that the ADO provides supporting evidence and reasoning to validate their request. A number of other prohibited substances were considered during the development and consultation process but which are not included in the final technical document and these include the haemoglobin based oxygen carriers known as HBOX, the homologous blood transfusions known as HBT and insulin. The reasons for these not making the 2015 uh, technical document are that there were deemed to be greater performance enhancement benefits to be gained from the other substances that are on the technical document. There's a number of dangers of use in terms of side effects and potential death in the incorrect use of these substances and insulin currently carries a limited laboratory capacity and further research is required around the testing method as well. So the focus in 2015 is the key groups of substances uh, that I've mentioned and that limited resources should be channeled towards testing for these. Of course, these other prohibited substances remain on the prohibited list and may be added to the technical document in the future, but for now, the testing of them should be conducted on an intelligence-based approach. For example, HBOX and HBT in line with suspicious ABP profiles or other supporting information on high-risk sports and athletes. Insulin is known to be used for recovery and in conjunction with other substances such as growth hormone and anabolic steroids. Therefore, as a guide, ADOs should consider the inclusion of some insulin analysis for those sports highlighted as high risk to growth hormone as part of their testing strategy. Adams has had a number of enhancements made to it to enable the implementation of the technical document in 2015. These include uh, create a breakdown of sport and disciplines to reflect the difference in differences in MLAs in the technical document. There's also the inclusion of the sports discipline as a mandatory field in Adams when setting up mission orders, inputting doping control forms, and when the laboratory enters results. Therefore, it's crucial that ADOs ensure that the laboratory copy of their doping control forms has an area for the discipline to be recorded as per the technical document to ensure that the laboratory can correctly input the results against the right sport and the right discipline. Clear communication on the type of analysis and testing authority and also result management authority must also be provided to the laboratories. Growth hormone releasing factors and insulin have been added to the laboratory reporting menu and these categories will be included in the annual test figures report for 2015 data moving forward. This will obviously enable a more accurate reporting and review of not only the numbers and types of analysis for each um, testing authority but also by the sports and discipline and will also highlight the number of AAFs or adverse analytical findings specific to those disciplines and sports. Adams 2016 will begin in the new year. Um, WADA received over 500 comments from, AD, from ADOs as part of the consultation process to enhance ADAMS. So thanks to everyone who took the time to submit their ideas on how to improve the system. A number of further changes are planned to the existing ADAMS, which will continue while the new ADAMS is being built. 
the next major Adams release will be in mid-December, which will contain uh, um, these changes I just mentioned. The MLAs for sports and disciplines for athletes with an impairment are contained in Appendix 2 of the technical document. Uh, these MLAs were recently approved at the WADA Executive Committee meeting and have just been published on the WADA website. So if you go on to the website, you will now see the Appendix 2 tables. This includes 45 sports and disciplines which undertook the same physiological risk assessment process as uh, was conducted on the able-bodied sports. The MLAs are not assigned to the various levels of classification that exist within these sports given the complexity of the, the various classification systems and therefore it's the responsibility of the ADO conducting the testing to apply the MLAs to their sport or discipline and in doing so consider the level of risks of the various classification systems involved in the sports. The technical document also provides for ADOs to have the ability to apply for a reduction in the MLAs. Now this is based on certain circumstances of the country or sport where such reductions will still lead to the most intelligent, effective and efficient use of available testing resources. ADOs must have a robust testing strategy that is still effective and proportionate to the level of risk and available resources and of course the burden is on the ADO to prove this. The criteria for such applications and associated forms are listed within the technical document. In terms of laboratories, there's been uh, great interest in the publishing of the laboratory prices and available services. This is a new requirement under the ISL from 1 Jan 2015. Each laboratory will now have its own pricing template which will be stored securely in Adams and which the laboratory will be responsible for populating. The template also includes other laboratory service information such as costs for sample documentation packages, uh, for the services of an APMU if they have one and also even for the, the storage of samples. This will provide at the click of a button a clear view as to what services a lab offers and what their prices are. So. ADOs will be able to run a simple report on the labs they wish to select and view and compare the services and prices. And uh, on your screen you'll see uh, the template that is, uh, that is currently being put into Adams and you'll see how that's laid out and that's only a small section of it. Uh, unfortunately this won't be available into, until the 1st of January, it'll be part of the mid-December uh, release so obviously the laboratories will need to populate this before uh, it becomes available to the ADOs. So those ADOs planning some testing in January and February should continue uh, as they have by contacting the labs directory directly and making the arrangements. Looking at uh, some of the enhancements that have been made to assist ADOs in manning the tech document and also in achieving more effective testing programs, there's going to be a greater ability to collect and analyse data and statistics through ADAMS. There's also for some sports that may not have implemented ABP blood programs now a strong recommendation for certain sports to do that. There's been the development of a new effective testing guideline and education on the technical document substances and guidance on testing strategies will shortly also be provided. The publishing of laboratory prices, services for each lab and also the enhancements to lab capacity will also be uh, positive moving forward. And of course we need to enhance the partnerships between us and the sharing of data and intelligence to further enhance our testing programs. That uh, wraps up now the presentation for today. Um, on behalf of WADA and the Technical Document Expert Group, I'd like to thank you all for your input into the development of the technical document. A lot of great positive work has been done by everyone which has us heading in the right direction towards the delivery of more effective programs and we look forward to working closely with you all in the implementation of the technical document and the code next year.